How's it going you guys? So in this video I want to talk a little bit about alternative medicine and a lot of the quackery that goes on in alternative medicine. So uh, first of all, alternative medicine is simply a term used to describe any uh, faucet of healing or attempt to heal that is outside of mainstream conventional treatments. I've heard a lot of irrelevant claims that uh, there is no alternative medicine. Uh, me uh, medicine is any anything that works. Anything that works is considered medicine. When in reality, that's actually not true. Um, medicine in particular, especially mainstream medicine, allopathic medicine, conventional medicine, simply refers to um, pharmaceutical interventions, um, surgeries and diagnostic testing and things that are standard practice in uh, most medical institutions. Uh, typically when a medical doctor receives his medical degree or her medical degree, um, that just simply grants them the ability to prescribe medications, diagnose uh, medical problems, and stuff surrounding medicine. That's what medicine really is. Um, it is not common practice for mainstream medical practitioners to recommend nutritional interventions or anything like that, despite the overwhelming evidence that a lot of these diseases that people are being treated for, including things like Crohn's disease, mainstream medical practitioners generally, uh, the only thing that they can really do is remove their colon and hope that that somehow helps. Uh, whereas there's a lot of functional medicine practitioners and even dietitians who uh, look for food intolerances and a lot of times um, I've seen many practitioners, dietitians who actually find food triggers that completely when they remove the food intolerance uh, relieve the patient of uh, Crohn's disease symptoms entirely and over time, depending on what that intolerance is, they may or may not be able to add the food back in over time. Um, so with that being said, um, it is a fact that there is a lot of quackery involved in alternative medicine, a lot of parasite cleansing, uh, detoxing. You have these people who go on juice fasts uh, or dry fasts for extended periods of time. Uh, and then you, you see YouTube videos of them drinking their own piss. Uh, you see, you know, raw vegans who basically malnourish themselves to death. And then they have like mucus coming out of their eyes. And they claim that that mucus coming out of their eyes is a symptom of detox and it's a healthy thing. When in reality, they're actually chronically malnourished and exhibiting signs of extreme uh, nutrient deficiency syndromes. Um, and I mean, I can go on and on. Um, so I have this book here by Holda Clark, who claims to be able to cure cancer through parasite cleanses and heavy metal detoxes. Uh, I admit I have not read the book from front to back, but, um, and I'm not claiming that she is a quack or anything, or and I'm not saying that her ideas are completely wrong or anything, but um, I have found that a lot of people, they fall into a trap of believing they got to cleanse themselves for years and years and they never experience relief of the symptoms they were originally trying to treat in the first place. In fact, a lot of times people, they start off with some very simple uh, symptoms and they go to these alternative medicine practitioners uh, and they get them on like hundred dollars worth of supplements and a, a, a really strange nutrition uh, protocol and the health problems that they originally came with, they develop even worse problems than they started with uh, simply by adhering to the crazy protocols that a lot of these alternative practitioners recommend. So, you know, for me personally, if anyone's familiar with most of my recommendations, it's entirely trial and error, um, targeted nutrition, uh, for the, the individual's specific situation, um, you know, addressing nutrient deficiencies and food intolerances is generally 
what a lot of these so-called mysterious diseases is usually the cause. Very basic nutritional changes. Um, getting enough of the nourishing foods your body needs that it can actually digest and absorb, and removing the foods that might be triggering symptoms, right? And this can look very different for many different people depending on what individual disease you're attempting to reverse or condition or whatever. Um, nine times out of ten, most people's problem is not a parasite or a bacterial infection or a heavy metal poisoning. Uh, most of the time, nine times out of ten, people don't need to remove their colon. They don't have an aspirin deficiency or a, you know, like most people, they have been fed the wrong health advice. They've been told by people like Dr. Berg that they must eat eight cups of vegetables a day take their fiber supplement, and then take some of their uh, nutrient supplements on the side. Um, you know, you have a lot of people that are promoting this idea that you got to live in a cave because Wi-Fi and EMF waves are ruining your health and all this stuff. Nine times out of ten, that's not actually your problem. And, you know, most people, for whatever reason, are going to believe in all of this crazy, super complicated nonsense that has no basis in basic physiology. Not to say that EMF doesn't affect our physiology. Okay, I've talked a little bit about the nuances of that before. I'm not saying that EMF is perfect. I'm not saying that EMF is harmless. I'm not saying Wi-Fi can't influence your health to some extent. What I am saying is that Nine times out of ten, the very basic foundation of most people's health is not being addressed. Nine times out of ten, people's health problems, that can include digestive uh, disorders, mental disorders, um, you know, inflammatory conditions, skin conditions, acne, lack of energy, insomnia, you know, um, a lot of these things. You know, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, cystic acne, poly, polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, spondylizing alkalysis or whatever. Um, you know, I can keep going on and on. Even things like asthma. A lot of these things have basic nutritional changes that need to be addressed. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as certain, you know, lifestyle tweaks, sleep hygiene. Um, are you exercising too much? Are you not doing the right types of exercise? But generally, it's, it's just basic foundational nutrition things that are not being addressed. A lot of times, people are following extreme, extreme diets that are, putting their, that are shooting their hormones down the drain. But anyway, the point here is, you know, for me personally, I, I've talked to hundreds of people who have fallen victim to these scam artists and they've been led down a rabbit hole of, you know, vitamins, supplements, cleansing, detoxing, um, buying expensive health machines, diagnostic tests, you know, from alternative health practitioners that are just milking money out of these, these people, unfortunately. And these people are getting nowhere. Meanwhile, their nutrition is, you know, there's some very basic nutrition tweaks that cost like literally $10 a day maybe um, as a whole. Their entire diet could be $10 a day at the most. A lot of times not even that. Um, no need for any supplements or anything like that or crazy machines or protocols or even exercises and their health problems completely resolve. You know, <laughs> like within a matter of days a lot of times. And honestly, mainstream medicine is notorious for doing pretty much the same exact thing, but masquerading as, you know, some kind of um, virtuous hero or something of some sort. You know, like, oh, you have psoriasis? Here, take this skin cream. You have irritable bowel syndrome? Take this medication that's, that slows down your, your, your bowel contraction. Um, you know, eat more fiber. 
Not to say that, you know, because I believe there's a time and place for mainstream medicine. I believe it can be very powerful for certain situations and certain people, especially because, you know, most of the patients that mainstream medicine treats are people that don't really have any intention of changing their diet at all. So a lot of mainstream practitioners I've talked to have just given up on recommending healthy nutrition. Um, and healthy nutrition that most doctors recommend is generally misguided advice that won't help their patients anyway because mainstream nutrition advice is hijacked by mainstream corporations and profit propaganda, uh, you know, mainstream corporate propaganda and stuff like that for profits. Um, unfortunately, but yeah, I'm not against mainstream medicine either, but the fact is a lot of mainstream medical procedures, most of them are extremely invasive and unnecessary. Removing your gallbladder because your gallbladder is uh, malfunctioning or you're, you have a gallstone or something. You know, nine times out of 10, it's inflammatory foods that are, that are overworking. Typically it's high amounts of polyunsaturated omega-6 oils, especially deep fried vegetable oils that are causing people's gallbladder problems. Then they get their gallbladder removed and what's going to happen from there is going to suppress their digestion and assimilation of fat and fat soluble nutrients. Not to say that, you know, it's not going to impair it completely because the liver can take over somewhat, you know, or somebody who has like um, a, an ovarian cyst, you know, doctors will a lot of times take out their, their ovaries or remove parts of their ovaries. Uh, in some cases, take out a large portion of their entire endocrine system. <laughs> you know, you have a hyperactive thyroid. They remove your entire thyroid. You know, and, and honestly, a lot of this stuff is extremely complicated. And so I can, under like, I can understand why so many people might have trouble figuring out that, you know, some people with hyperthyroidism actually are having an overactive immune response due to... Um, allergic reactions to dairy protein, casein, or, or wheat protein such as gliadin, not just gluten, but gliadin as well. And that can be real complicated to understand. Or that psoriasis can be triggered somehow. You know, scaly skin rashes can be triggered by grain intolerances. That was my case. Doctors recommended me all these skin creams and things. And, uh, you know, my irritable bowel syndrome as well was being caused by that. Doctors telling me to eat more fiber. Well, guy, it was actually all the, the fibrous grains I was eating that I was actually causing it in the first place. So, you know, what I'm trying to get at here is that nine times out of 10, people's health problems are extremely obvious, but a lot of times people, they are too stubborn to be open to the possibility that some of these problems are being caused by certain nutritional factors. Like, for example, you have health gurus out there. For example, Frank Tufano is one. I have to, I have to mention him, he's a perfect example. Um, he believes that sodium and all that is extremely unhealthy because it, he thinks it throws off the balance of the rest of your minerals. Meanwhile, he's been experiencing um, all sorts of symptoms of sodium deficiency and blaming it on histamine intolerance Blaming it on EMF waves and Wi-Fi, blaming it on um, on iron overload, and he still hasn't solved his problems. But he makes these videos where he makes these absolute suggestions that he found is the solution to his health problem. A lot of these people they don't know what's really causing the health problem, and their stubbornness is preventing them to find it. You know, and in mainstream medicine, this is extremely common. Um, so it's a combination of stubbornness. And then people need to make a living, so they scam the crap out of people with solutions that don't actually help. And again, I'm not saying that Holda Clark is a scam artist. Uh, I actually haven't read the entire book. I'm just familiar with her principles. But nine times out of ten, people can heal a lot of their diseases without following these crazy principles. Um, and, you know, for me, it's like... I see these things are real obvious and I just want to make them make people aware of these things. But a lot of people for some reason just they just don't want to listen. They don't they don't want to believe that their health problems that, that seem so complex and severe um, might actually be very simple. <laughs> they want to go out there and buy all these supplements and 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 follow these complicated uh, like 
you know, things like enemas, things like uh, parasite cleanses like black walnut hull, clove, and wormwood and stuff like that. Not to say that they don't have their place, right? And, and the thing is, hundreds and hundreds of people that I've, I've talked to have had problems like this. And then like when I, when I help them out, you know, within days, they feel a lot better. You know, and I personally had the same problem, you know, for the first two years of my health journey. I was bamboozled by the blood type diet and raw veganism and, and, and cleansing parasites. And, you know, it's crazy the rabbit hole we go down. And then sometimes even we become super healthy and, and we resolve all our health problems, but we're so addicted to finding, you know, solutions that now we're looking for this nirvana of health that doesn't actually exist. And so you have people like uh, Vegetable Police, who's on this constant health journey to find solutions to a problem that he doesn't actually have. And he's developed uh, chronic, uh, what would you call it? Um, chronic... God dang it, what was the word for it? Hypochondria, you know, which I had for a long time, right? Where people, they just, they're addicted to finding solutions to, health pro to their health problems so they can be super healthy and still not be satisfied. Um, and so, you know, you gotta be really aware of this. Um, you know, and I, I just wanna make this video because, you know, I don't consider myself an alternative uh, practitioner of any kind, even though you could say I am. Uh, I don't consider myself anti-mainstream medicine or anti-alternative medicine. What I am is anti-bullshit and what I am is pro-truth, especially as far as health is concerned. And that's very hard to find because nutrition science is all about gaining evidence and developing opinions based on evidence and asking questions about the available evidence. It's not about finding truths because you can't really do that. But a lot of people, they're, they're caught up in like this limbo land where they're not getting anywhere. Uh, which is why I make the videos that I do to help people, right? And most people, they have very individual health needs that require individual tweaks to their diet. And then slowly over time, they can go back to eating like a normal diet. But also, I think, you know, nutritional supplements and meditation and all those types of things are very valuable. I think, you know, vitamins, minerals, amino acids like tyrosine and theanine. I think tonic herbs like ginseng, holy basil, ashwagandha. I think these things are all very valuable. But I think the main problem people have is that none of these supplements I mentioned are the answer. Okay, they're not the answer. They're not the cure. They're not a remedy. Um, the same thing goes for parasite cleanses and all that crap. I don't think, I think a lot of those things just distract people. The same thing can be said about, you know, medications and surgeries. Nine times out of 10, those are not the answer. They're not the cause. They're not addressing the root cause. And a lot of times they're just making your symptoms even worse. Your basic foundation of nutrition is what should resolve most health problems. And if you actually are doing what's healthy, you won't need supplements to resolve your health problems. And there are some exceptions. Usually people have been on medications for a long time, or if people actually have had surgery on their organs, a lot of times then they might need supplementation. Like if you remove your gallbladder, you might need bile, you might need enzyme supplements, you know? But nine times out of 10, you don't need those. You just need to actually follow a diet that's actually healthy for your health. <laughs> and then things like ginseng can be used to build your energy, to build your health, um, build your immunity. But as a complement, you know, the basic foundation, your baseline nutrition is what should actually solve it. And I believe this to be the same thing with a lot of things. Like I know people who, you know, they talk about marijuana as medicine and I definitely believe marijuana, you know, cannabis can be a very powerful medicine. Um, but I think most people, they rely on it and they have these very obvious problems in the background that they're not addressing. 
and whenever those problems show up in their life, they rely on the cannabis. And then they never resolve these problems in the background, and so they constantly have these problems that grow and grow and grow. And, you know, I don't think you should need those things in order to, you know, live a healthy and whole life. Anyway, that's a whole nother video for another topic, and that's something I have some very um, important observations to talk about with, because I, because I've had a lot of amazing friends that have, well, anyway. So leave your questions in the comments down below. The main point here is, you know, you really shouldn't need these crazy, these complicated cleanses, detoxes, heavy metal detoxes, these supplements, um, and all these things. You shouldn't need to remove your gallbladder, remove your organs, remove your tonsils, remove your adrenal glands. What you need is, you know, a basic understanding of how these things happen. Um, a lot of times it's very hard because, you know, I personally have studied for hours and hours a day for years because I've had enough time to do so, which is why I know so much and why I actually have been able to get the results I have. Most people, they work full-time jobs and don't have time to do that, so they rely on expert opinion and they rely on these health practitioners that a lot of times scam them and lead them nowhere, which is unfortunate. So if you can't gain the knowledge that I have, which I understand, then you're going to have to find somebody who understands nutrition the way that you need to understand it. And that's hard to find if you don't understand nutrition and the nutritional causes of a lot of these diseases. And man, it's, it's really unfortunate, you know. Um, it's really unfortunate how many people are suffering from problems that could be easily addressed, but they're not able to solve them because health practitioners don't know how to solve them. It's unfortunate. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, leave your questions and comments down below. Uh, let me know what you got from this video. I appreciate everyone, and I will talk to you all next time.